Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I'm your host, Transify, and welcome to another Camp Cretaceous video. And for today, I'll be giving my thoughts and opinions on the second season of the Jurassic World animated series that is still the talk of the town. I might say, it may have been better than season one, but that's just my opinion. Once again, Camp Cretaceous has given us moments of suspense, triumph, horror, and of course, a few brand new dinosaurs. And with season three just over three weeks away as of recording this, there's no better time to review this season than now. Before we continue, beware of the spoilers that lay ahead. If you haven't seen season two yet, stop watching this video right now and check out the new season. If you're still here, remember, you've been warned. And let's now get into it. Firstly, I want to say this new series took a very dark turn with three new characters. In this series, we got Mitch and Tiff, a big game hunter couple, and their guide, Hap. It was already kind of established before the seasons for these that Mitch and Tiff were poachers, and it was definitely solidified after Darius discovered the separate head of a Sinoceratops in Mitch and Tiff's private yurt. This reveal scene was really dark and completely unexpected, especially seeing that this is a series that aims for a younger audience. This is one of the reasons why I love Camp Cretaceous. They aren't shy to show deaths, but they do it in a way that is still not bloody or extremely violent. Even in the films, there are very few deaths that are particularly violent, such as um, Ray Arnold's arm fall falling onto Ellie Sadler, Eddie Carr getting ripped in half by the T-Rex family, e even Ken Wheatley getting his arm ripped off by the Indoraptor. Most of the other deaths are cleverly hidden or obscured, yet you can understand what is going down by listening and from gathering information based on what you can see. But digressing back to the new characters. I wasn't expecting Half to be the one who actually tried to save the, the protagonists from the married villains. It even comes as more of a surprise when he sacrifices himself to the Baryonyx trio. More on those guys later. Now this is a bit of a controversial scene as we don't really see Half die or even hear him scream. So it's unclear as to whether or not he, that he's dead. I feel that the only way we will know for sure is if he comes back in a later season. Until then, I will have to say he's MIA. And of course, we have the main cast from this season returning. Darius, Kenji, Yaz, Sammy, and Ben. Yes, Ben actually survived the Pteranodon attack. It seems that many of them have gone through serious changes since the events prior to the 2015 incident, while still staying grounded to what they were supposed to be, although Ben seemed to have gone through a very drastic change, as well as Bumpy, as a matter of fact. In episode 5, we see how Ben changes progressively as the wimpy nerd to the stereotypical tough guy, in a way he went from wimp to frickin' Tarzan. Bumpy also managed to grow into her subadult stage, getting her so closer to her full size and becoming less cute. Ben and Bumpy weren't the only ones who survived, though. Toro, the Carnotaurus from the previous season, has remarkably managed to pull through, despite being horribly disfigured from the fiery explosion. Toro only appears in one episode, and he basically just serves as a punching bag for Ben and Bumpy. This gave me serious Turok vibes, which I do not like at all. Fighting a full-grown Carnotaurus with nothing but a spear in a modern world is just so stupid. This one scene alone just left a bad taste in my mouth, especially after Bumpy joins into the fight. One thing I should point out is that the scene of Toro backing in, out into the cliff just reminded me of Disney's Dinosaur, when the herd makes the carnivore back off and when Aladar manages to push the predator off the cliff. Whether it's coincidence or deliberate, I personally just didn't like the scene, but I haven't really complained about it that much. Although I have a feeling I know what Rick Raptor reviews would say. Rip off, rip off, rip off. <laughs> but again, this is just a joke. I'm actually not being serious here. Speaking of dinosaurs, let's talk about Camp Cretaceous' latest addition to the Isla News blog roster, the Ceratosaurus, and it's not a lot. We've only really seen this dinosaur twice in the season, and both appearances were brief. The first of which was a greenish-gray individual at the watering hole, and then the one with the colors from Jurassic Park 3, who chased the kids for like not even two minutes. I wish it had more of a prominent role than it was given, 
Yet I'm still glad it had more moments in this series than it did in JP3. Next up on the list is the Baryonyx Trio, Chaos, Grim, and Limbo. And may I say, these models are so much less shrink-wrapped than they were in Fallen Kingdom. The portrayal of these three individuals is just so damn good. I'd say even better than Toro, since they are a more recurring character than Toro. The three of them hunted in a family union with Grim, by the looks of it, is the youngest of the group and is a pack leader. I especially love the scene where Sammy, Yaz, and Brooklyn are hiding in the genetics lab while Chaos searches for them, which gave me total Raptors in the Kitchen vibes. I could feel the suspense as the kids tried their best to stay out of sight of the dinosaur, even though they did get caught in the end. No worries, they got out alive. And even though these are supposed to be the villains of the season, you still have to remember that these are animals trying to survive, which is made more apparent when Tiff kills Grim with her rifle. It was a very sad moment, having followed this one individual for so long and then seeing her get killed so easily. It especially tugs the heartstrings when Limbo and Chaos stand over her body. It seems that the dinosaurs, or at least the Baryonyx anyway, mourn their dead, like some species of birds do today. Finally, we have the big bad of season two, everyone's favorite queen of Jurassic World, Rexy the Tyrannosaurus Rex. After a whole season with no appearance, she finally makes her debut in this season. And yes, Sammy even calls her Rexy, meaning that the name is official beyond a shadow of a doubt. Sorry, Roberta fans, but one thing that did bug me a tiny bit was the lack of scars on her face and neck. Did she get makeup done before shooting the series? Was she going for a new look to make herself look over 20 years younger? Whatever the reason, I still love her design in this series as it remains faithful to the model from ILM, with just a few modifications. <laughs> anyway, Rexy herself has a pretty interesting appearance, as she's seen in the first episode building some sort of nest. While, while the reason for building the nest has become a controversial topic, being she's making a nest for her own comfort or she's pregnant, although I don't know why she'd be pregnant, it is some animalistic behavior that reminds us that these animals are not monsters, but living creatures. The scene where she chases Mitch and Tiff around, and then Darius and Sammy afterwards, is my favorite moment with her. Just seeing her cause havoc to these hunters was awesome. And it just shows that Rexy isn't always the good guy. She will go for anyone. I wasn't too keen on Mitch tasing the T-Rex on the snout though. That looked like it hurt, but no worries, she does get her justice. The new settings look pretty good as well. I like how Main Street was torn up from the battle between Rexy Blue and the Indominus Rex, who the kids later find dead in the Mosasaurus Lagoon, but I feel like there was still too many buildings or structures that were intact. But of course I will excuse this as this is an animated series, not live action. Next we have the kids' new home base, which was built up out of the ruins of the previous camp facility. It looks pretty elaborate as well, not bad for a bunch of teenagers. And of course the main focus of the season, the watering hole. Both carnivores and herbivores come to this location and get along absolutely perfectly. Mitch and Tiff were obsessed with finding this place, as many dinosaurs came here to drink in peace. Luckily, their plans were foiled by the kids' combined efforts by chasing all the dinosaurs away from the watering hole, even though Rexy showed up and was apparently the bigger of the two threats. In terms of human deaths, as long as we consider Hap MIA, we only got two of them. The first of which was Mitch, who got caught in one of his snare traps and was left behind by Tiff. Rexy found the hunter and glared. Mitch even tried to fire his rifle, but it was bent from a stampede. He could only scream as the queen roared and then ate him alive off screen, of course, while Chaos and Limbo watched from the bushes. The second death goes to, obviously, Tiff, who manages to get the boat docked on the island and drive off, but not before the two Baryonyx jumped onto the boat, broke through the glass, and killed her. Less deaths than season one, but they are still there all the same. There are still dinosaurs on Isla Nublar that haven't been seen in the series as of yet, but we do know for certain that the Gallimimus and Dimorphodon will be making a return in Season 3, as well as the brand new Monolophosaurus and the monstrous hybrid E750, who has been hinted towards in Season 1 
and now seems to have become more prominent in Season 2. What is the E750? Why was it made? What was Dr. Wu planning in that lab? And what is its intentions? Ooh, I, ooh, I am so hyped. But back to Season 2. I overall thought Season 2 was a great return back into the series. With pros and cons attached, obviously. I gotta give this season of Camp Cretaceous a 5 out of 5 total. Anyway, that's going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe today, hit that bell so you don't miss anything new. Link to the Discord in the description down below. And until next time, this is Tyranno Senpai signing off. Alrighty then, take care enough, bye bye then.